This story begins like many other games in this genre, on a dark and stormy night. This is, of course, only for dramatic effect. Adding to this drama, we see the main antagonist busy with evil deeds. This is used as comic relief, but also to establish character. All villains need a loyal and annoying servant that ultimately will betray his master in the end. This story is no exception and has chosen Sullivan for the task. My lord, the experiment has escaped. He pants. Two things. First, sound the alarm and activate all the traps. The immortal annoyedly replies. And if he somehow should make it out, I'm sure the dragon... I'm sorry, Wyvern wouldn't mind a snack. Second, you need some exercise. Sorry, but if I sugarcoat it, you'll eat that too, he continues. But what about the protagonist, our hero? The one with a fancy walk and a mighty weapon. Yeah, this is not him. This is just a random trash mob. Will he be used later on in the game? No. Say goodbye to him forever. Finally, we see our actual hero. But it's too peaceful. Something needs to break this tranquility. Every hero has a sidekick that, for no apparent reason, has a superpower that will aid the hero in solving critical puzzles. We Our hero picked her up and continued with his quest. Norms are your main sources of protein. Congratulations! Would you look at that?
defy the immortal's peer. Oh, what is that? At this point, something interesting needs to happen. How about some orcs having trouble connecting to their Wi-Fi, for example? No, not good enough. Take a look at this big pressure plate instead. Hmm, interesting. Yes! This outcome probably didn't come as a surprise to anyone. Except for Sullivan, who got very surprised to see the prisoner, our hero, escape on a killing spree in the dungeon. This perfectly wraps up the introduction, though. Let's continue.
A bit over refreshed and hungry, but looks pretty happy. A bit over refreshed and hungry, but looks pretty happy. Instantly consume. A bit over refreshed and hungry, but looks pretty happy. Now that we have reached the end of the tutorial level, the player is ready for the actual game. But here's also the mandatory deadly swinging trap section with a jumping puzzle, just as expected. Finally, we are done. This is also emphasized in the uplifting background music. In fact, we have decided we are completely done with our hero as well. It's time to let things go. Fine. Let's show what really happened.
This mysteriously bobbing ghost lady is Melisande, leader of the Ceaseless Warriors Guild, that now had become ceased. She asked who our hero was and where he came from. Melisande paid no attention to our hero's answer since she was too busy thinking about the big explosion that killed her. She asked our hero if he had something to do with it. Outraged by the answer, Melisande demanded our hero to resurrect her before it was too late. She explained that the ingredients could be found in and around the village, and the ritual could be performed in the basement of the Jolly Barrel Inn. Also, it's too dangerous to walk alone. Take my mace with you. I can't use it in this form anyways, she added before she vanished. Wow! You... A delicious...
Our hero browsed through the spell book and confidently picked the correct spell, as any protagonist would do. As Melisande casually thanked our hero for reviving her, she couldn't fail to notice something felt a bit off. She apparently was not fully recovered and asked if our hero really had used the correct spell on her. Yes, of course. Our hero lied. This was a terrible situation. Now that Melisande's warriors were all dead and she was incapable to fight, she explained that orcs and other foul beasts were harassing the lands and they needed someone to keep them at bay before the immortal grew too powerful. Our hero had not yet heard about the main antagonist and asked Melisande to explain a bit more about him. A long time ago, the immortal came to this land. He introduced himself as a humble and kind wizard that spoiled the people with gifts and luxurious artifacts, which they naively accepted. He eventually became acquainted with the highest royalties in the capital city, earning him more trust and access to all of the land's resources, free of charge. Big mistake. One morning, the citizens were awoken by the Immortal's enchanting voice, with the city shaking uncontrollably. Not only did he split the capital city, but he also divided the land into three parts, making it impossible for the people to reach him. Fortunately for us, he is a villain of good conduct, and forged the villain-beating artifact, the only weapon powerful enough to defeat him. The whereabouts of this weapon is, of course, unknown. Melisande realized she could not take on the quest to defeat the immortal in her current state, and asked our hero to take her place instead. She realized our hero maybe could be useful after all by talking to Richard Morningwood, the ticket master. He is located just outside town at his extraordinary carnival site, she added. But your weapon looks terrible. Did you get that out of a cereal box? Visit the blacksmith here in town and get yourself some new gear, she added. Melisande will remain here at the inn and keep the local pub supporters hydrated until she has healed. The Black Schmidt asked, Need something to help your enemies see the error of their ways?
I felt that one. Watch out! Watch out! Our hero met Richard Morning Wood, the ticket master, who explained that no one could buy tickets for the tourist attraction since his ticket machine was stolen. Richard Morning Wood, the ticket master, asked if our hero could help him find it and in exchange get a discount on the ticket price. There are some suspicious tracks leading from here that might take you to the thieves. I'd start checking that out. Richard Morningwood, the ticket master, said. Come <laughs> on. 
player. Oh, the player doesn't seem to be eligible to enter this area. Yet, it requires some sort of protection against the rain. Necessary, but very fun. I feel so sorry for that one's wife. Our hero stumbled upon a stinky outhouse. Did he dare to enter it? <laughs> <laughs> 